today we're dialing into Xenix using my TRS-80 Model 12 and a real 300 baud modem. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the detail on this video. If you want to know more about how the phone portion of this works, um, my little phone simulator, check out part two of my 90s dial-up internet simulator video featuring a Tandy 4825SX. That has a pretty good background on how I set this all up. Anyway, let's get started. This is the real online experience. We'll just go online like it's 1982. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the serial port up. And you'll notice that I'm using my Tandy 300 baud modem. This is the one from the unboxing video. This is a DCM6. And now we're going to go into the terminal. So the line feed option because we need that and we're going to go into terminal mode. Okay, so the DCM6 is not an intelligent modem by any stretch of the imagination, so I need to dial for it. To dial, I'm going to use this slightly newer but still relatively vintage realistic Chronophone 255. And I'm going to dial over to the other modem which is going to pick up and when it does I will connect this modem and I will hang up the phone. So here we go. I'm trying to get this close enough so you can hear the tone. We have a carrier tone. We're going to hang up the phone. Now we're on. Tandy Xenex version 3.3. I'll just log in. Oh, I'll back that up. It's not going to like that. It's going to prompt me and waste valuable connect time. I might be thinking permanent charges back in the day to dial into a, another system could be pretty expensive. Now imagine doing it at 300 baud. And there were faster baud rate modems you could get at 1200 or later in the, you know, later at 2400, but 300 baud was a very common modem speed, especially at home. See now, if I want to see what my files are, I have to expect a little time here. But I am connected to Xenix, we're talking. Um, this is the Tristos terminal. It's not the smartest. It doesn't support anything special or fancy. Um, I have to see if I can find some Model 2 slash 12 terminal software that's a little smarter. Maybe does a VT100 or something. Uh, but anyway, here. So you can see I, I listed all of my files here in my home directory. Um, I can cap one of them. Um, test being one of the files from my deload video. Backspace key. Um, now, if I want to list all my files and get the details, I really want to contemplate that. So we're going to be here for a while. So while that's going, of course, we have a classic computer, so we need a little whiskey to go with it. Uh, this here, today we're in the Irish whiskey realm. Uh, we're not doing scotch today. I'm going to take a tasty sip of tasty whiskey. Mm. Mm. Really got time to let that settle while this file list is loading. The Model 16 I'm dialing into is right behind me. We'll see that in a minute. And this Chronophone 255 that you see over there is an eBay special. Uh, I wanted a Radio Shack phone from around the era. The phone, I think, was made in 1990, so it's a little new, but um, in relative history, um, it's close enough. The modem is also Tandy branded, of course, so that's a uh, you know, 1985 or later part. This one was made in 87. And we're just going to continue to make conversation here while this goes. This is a very period thing to do with real dial-up. I could have connected the machines together with a serial cable and set the baud rate to 300, but that wasn't the point. The point was to see if I could get the modems to go. And it's a whole lot more fun dialing into a computer when you're using a dumb modem you have to dial for. Um, so, you know, we're, we're here. We can do this. Um, what I had to do for the terminal type, I just set it to TRS-16. Um, it seemed to be closest. A lot of the others have control characters that muck it up. Uh, ADS25, VT100, etc. Um, even ANSI did. So uh, I left it as TRS16. Things like VI do not work. Uh, there is no clearing the screen or anything really. It's just not going to go. Um, and when I'm done and I want to hang up, all I have to do is hit Control D, and you might faintly hear the click of the modem behind me cutting off. And now I no longer have carrier detected, so I'm just going to uncheck the connect button. And there we are. So that's the Model 12 side. 
Let's take a closer look at that phone, shall we? This is a Chronophone 255. I get it from this angle so it's easier to see. And uh, what a beast. Faux wood grain finish. And you can see we have this nice Radio Shack handset. If I dial 5309, oh, that's the number I dialed. And we're back on again. So let's look at the Model 16 side of this. Over on the 16 side, we have my Model 16 with my Dremen fused 15 megabyte hard disk system and a Xenix 3.2 image upgraded to Xenix 3.3. You can see here on the screen, I have my terminal types listed there. I've enabled TTY01, which enables a terminal on that port. And then, just for funds, after I dialed into it, I had pulled up STTY to see what the parameters were. And I have the modem configured to set the line speed of the serial port to the same speed as the phone line connection. So if you connect to 300 baud, you get a 300 baud line speed. And then down here, we have a courier modem. This modem is not period, but if you were dialing into a remote system, your consumer modem would be dialing into something a lot more fancy and probably rack mounted. So. I figured this would suffice, and it does 300 baud. The only catch with this was I had to send it in ATB1 to enable bell mode. Otherwise, the modems would connect, and the Model 12 would receive characters from the 16, but I couldn't actually send characters back. It wouldn't work. And these are connected. I'll only go into this a little. Um, this is a SunRocket uh, VoIP adapter, one of those uh, home phone replacement services. SunRocket's long gone. The modem was unlocked, so I have it connected to a VoIP server I'm running on the on the ESX server that you saw in one of my previous videos when I was doing the Tristnik project. And then these serial cables connected together, this is just the Model 16 on the right and the modem on the left. Both modems are connected to this two-line SunRocket unit, and that is where everything's coming from. The Pi is on, but nothing's actually happening. And that's really as simple as it gets. It's, it's pretty easy to set up a dialing connection and it's a whole lot of fun. Is it practical? No. Um, will I actually use it for anything useful? No. But it's fun to see. So that is dialing into Xenix with a real 300 Bob modem. Thanks for watching and I'll see everyone next time.